Hi, I'm Dave from Garmin, and today we're going to learn how easy it is to set up your G5000 in your beach jet for departure. This will include an overview of our touchscreen controller, initialization, and entering a flight plan. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to look at is the Garmin touchscreen controller. This truly is the magic of our system, how you input everything into the uh, G5000. First thing we want to look at is the top half, which is basically our common transponder portion of the, uh, of the controller. So starting in the upper left is basically, it says audio and radios. That's basically our audio panel. I just press it and it brings up an audio panel if I wanted to monitor a nav or for some reason I've still got an ADF in the airplane, I want to turn it on, listen to it. That's where you would do it. Below it is intercom. You're hardly ever going to touch that. It's do you want to talk to your co-pilot or not talk to your co-pilot or if you need to adjust your intercom volume. Next to it is COM1. There's my standby and active. You'll see over here COM2, standby and active. In the middle, is a shortcut to the audio panel. So I don't have to go into the audio panel to switch between COM1 and 2. I can just push the mic button and that switches between COM1 and COM2. And then if I want to monitor my COM2 in this instance, I just press the monitor. Or now I'm only listening to COM1. To change a frequency, you'll see here the standby. I can just touch the standby frequency and it brings up a touchpad. At that point, I can dial in a frequency. They give me contact Kansas City Center 125.0. I can dial 12500, or I don't have to dial the one, and I don't have to dial the zeros at the end. So I could just go 25. There it is, 1250. I press transfer if I want to transfer it into my active, or enter if it goes into my standby. In this case, I just press transfer, and it took that 1250. You can also use the knob at the bottom if you still like conventional knob tuning and hold in on it and that'll flip it between active and standby. Again, once you get comfortable with the touch screen, I think you'll always want to go that route. Then I can hit this back button, it's always in the back corner, and get out of things. Now if we look over here to the right is our transponder. I can touch transponder button in the upper right. And that's just to turn it on, turn it off. If I want to switch between one and two, seldom are you ever going to use that. Then you've got your frequency that you can go ahead and tune your transponder in. So let's say they give us one, two, three, four for our squawk. We just press that and press enter and it puts in our transponder code. So that's a basic overview of how you do your comm and transponder functionality. Now down at the lower part, it's pretty simple. Right here, if you see an icon, it says like traffic. If I press traffic, that'll switch traffic up on my multifunction display. If I want TAWS, that puts TAWS up on my multifunction display. And we're gonna cover more of this functionality in our third video in this series. So right now, I'm gonna go back to map. So we just get into the airplane. The airplane's gonna know we just fired up. So it's gonna automatically take us to our initialization page. If it doesn't, or in this case, since we uh, got out of the initialization page, I can just press Utilities and Initialization. Again, this is where the system is going to fire up when you get in the airplane. So first thing we want to do is set our weights. So I just touch Weight and Fuel. Now it goes Operating Weight, we're 10,500 in our airplane. Then we can go here for our crew. Let's say... Uh, Oh, between me and my co-pilot, we're 400 pounds. I press enter. Now I can go payload. We have four passengers, and you know what? I'm guessing they're about 170 pounds each. So I put that in. Well, in this example we're going to use today, we're going to be taking off out of Aspen and flying down to Phoenix. I think that always makes a great, uh, great example. But uh, so, so everybody went shopping in uh, Aspen, but luckily they only have about 150 pounds of uh, baggage on this trip. Now fuel, let's say fuel on board, we're gonna take 3,600 pounds. So that gives us an aircraft weight of 15,330. Then I can go take off. I could subtract taxi fuel. We're not taxiing that much up in Aspen, so we'll just take 100 pounds off. 
So we're about 15.2 is about our takeoff weight. So we've entered our weights in. You'll see a next button at the bottom. We press next and it takes us to where we enter our V speeds. So it's about three degree, negative three degrees Celsius today. So, and you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and use flap. So that's gonna give me V speeds close to, oh, let's do V1 108, VR 118, and uh, V2 120. Actually, I wanted VR to be 113, probably more accurate. So we've got our V speed set. Then I press next. So for N1, if I just put in the ground temperature, which is negative three, enter, it's automatically going to go ahead and uh, if I look up here and bug my takeoff power, my N1 power. So then I can press the next key and it's automatically going to put us into the flight plan. So now it's time to build our flight plan. It knows we're sitting in Aspen, so that's already populated into our flight plan. I can do it in any order I want to build a flight plan, but I'll kind of go conventional. So I'm gonna add destination. So in this case, we're going to Phoenix. So that's K, P, H, X. There's Phoenix, and I kind of get confirmation. It says Phoenix Sky Harbor, enter. So I have that in our flight plan. So what we filed for, we know what we're gonna to get today is they're gonna give us a lens eight departure with a Grand Junction transition. And then we're gonna plan on the Eagle six arrival into Phoenix with the uh, Winslow transition. So first thing is we've got our departure. Our departure is a procedure. If you look on the side of our flight plan page, we have a procedure button, procedure. And now it says departure, arrival or approach. We wanna load our departure. So we're at Aspen. I want to change departure. I just touch that data field and we're going to do the lens eight and we are going to get the Grand Junction transition, which is Juliet November Charlie. Then we're taking off a runway 33 preview. We could look at it on our, our uh, multifunction display, but I'm going to do that later. So I'm going to go ahead and load it. So now our departure is loaded into the flight plan. Well, we're expecting the uh, uh, Eagle 6 arrival. So let's go ahead and load that. Procedure, select arrival. So it's Phoenix, there's our arrivals. We're gonna go do the Eagle 6. There's Eagle 6, I select that. And India November Whiskey is Winslow. So I choose that. And you know what, winds are out of the uh, kind of westerly today. I'm expecting for right now, two five left. So I'm gonna go ahead and select two five left and load. So right now, if I go back and look, I've got my departure loaded. I've also have my arrival loaded, kind of going down to winds low. And even when I look at my arrival, you can see all the altitudes for the descend via. This will couple and fly and bridge the whole uh, descent into, uh, into Phoenix right before we intercept the ILS into a two five left. One more thing I like to do is I'll go up and look at my uh, multifunction display and kind of zoom out and do a sanity check. So on this departure, and we can kind of see it in the flight plan too, it is gonna be fly heading 343 degrees till you reach 9,100 feet. Once we reach 9,100 feet, we're gonna to turn to a heading of 273 and intercept the uh, localizer outbound to Lens intersection out of Aspen. Well, I can kind of come out to my map too and do a sanity check. I can see there's runway heading, 8240, that's 400 feet above the ground when we can engage our autopilot. We can uh, then go to the heading of 343 to 9100 feet. Once we hit 9100 feet, we'll turn outbound at 273, I believe that was, and then intercept that localizer outbound. But with the G5000, we can keep it all in GPS mode to fly that departure. And then we climb up to 16,000 feet for, uh, for lens. And I can even zoom out farther on my map and kind of go, does this routing look logical? And I do like just kind of getting the whole picture. Does it look like I input everything right? A picture is worth a uh, thousand words. And uh, 
no different with the G5000. So that part is all set up. So we have our flight plan set up. Next thing I'm doing, I'm sitting on the ramp. I wanna go ahead and get ATIS and tack ground and get everything and confirm our clearance. So what I can do is just hit the back key here and go to the home screen. What I'm gonna do is pull my frequencies out of the database. And there's lots of ways to do it. But uh, one way is I can go to waypoint info and I want airport info. Now, since we loaded the arrival into Phoenix, it gives us a Phoenix frequencies, but we can change that back to Aspen. I could press KASE again, or there's always a shortcut key. You'll see this little find key. I press find. It has a recent list of the last places I've gone to, a nearest list, waypoints of my flight plan. So it's kind of a shortcut key. In this case, we just want Aspen. So I press Aspen. So this is now kind of my directory of airport information for Aspen. So it's got our info telling us, hey, elevation is 78, 38, what kind of F for Avgas and different things. I could press frequencies tab, that gives me all the frequencies. If I press weather, it's gonna give me the METARs and terminal forecast. Airport directory is gonna give me just like a little airport directory of the FBOs and their numbers. But this is kind of on every airport, the information you get on them. But let's go to frequencies. First thing we want is ATIS, I press ATIS. Where do I want to put that frequency? Am I COM1 active, COM1 standby, COM2 active, or COM2 standby? For me, I want to get it first. I'm going to put in my COM2 standby, and I probably would flip over here so I could listen to it. I also then want to queue up my clearance delivery. I'll put it in standby. Ground control, let's put it into our active and COM1, and I'll go ahead and get uh, tower queued up. And again, this is just an example of how you can sort your frequencies out and get them directly from the database. So I now have my COM2 ATIS queued up, listening to that. Then I'll go ahead and you know flip and get clearance delivery, get ground departure. Uh, I can also get departure off my frequency page here. And I'll actually go ahead and set it up. So I've got my frequencies loaded up directly from the database. Now it's time to taxi out. What I would do is zoom in on the map and part of our maps on the multifunction display, they have what we call safe taxi, which gives you a detailed taxiway diagram. So you'll be able to see where you are on the runway. We also have a feature that you can add to safe taxi. Safe taxi is standard, but that we call surface watch. Surface watch is gonna go ahead and highlight the runway that you selected as your active runway makes it a little easier when you're taxiing out. Also, on your primary flight display as you're taxiing along, it's gonna show what taxiway you're on and how far it is to your next intersection. It will also show you when you line up on a runway how much runway is remaining. Uh, surface Watch will also have the ability, if you happen to be taking off of a taxiway or not the runway you selected or landing on a taxiway or landing on the runway you didn't depict, it's going to give you warnings and tell you, hey, taxiway takeoff, warning. So Surface Watch is a nice enhancement to our safe taxi. Now that we're all lined up, we've got our flight plan loaded, we kind of did our sanity check on the multifunction display. Let's look over at our primary flight display. So real quick, we're gonna set our altitude. So we are going to 16,000 feet. I set 16,000 feet in. There's my barrel pressure. We have approach turned on. Let's go ahead and get our frequency and it'll decode what our frequency is. We can also look up here at our scoreboard for the autopilot, what function we're in. Since this can fly the whole departure off of the GPS and the FMS, I go ahead and set it to FMS on this departure. So everything is set up. I've got my flight director bars. I hit my uh, takeoff go around switch on the throttles. So they're queued up. One thing I do wanna show is you look at this screen, that's with our synthetic vision on. So sometimes people go, yeah, do you really need synthetic vision or do you, uh, not want to have synthetic vision. And what we can do is go here for an example. Here we are taking off out of Aspen. That's what it looks like with the conventional screen. And there's what it looks like with synthetic vision. To me, that is a big enhancement. 
One more thing I would do if I was doing this departure is probably bring up a TOS page to take off with, have that turned on. So what I can do is split the screen with my co-pilot. If I just press half, now the co-pilot controller controls this multifunction display. The pilot controller controls this multifunction display. So now I have a nice image of the TAWS in the valley that that departure shoots us through. So if anything happens, I at least have that screen along with my synthetic vision. That's the basics of using the capabilities of the G5000 during initialization, startup, and taxi. To learn more about the G5000, watch the other videos in this series.